Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's talk about box plots. So after we ask a statistical question and we collect some data, we can take that data and summarize it and organize it using these things called box plots. And essentially, all we're really doing with box plots is that we're organizing our data into four groups. To do so, we're going to need five essential points. First, we need the minimum or least value. Then we need quartile one, also known as the lower quartile or the median of the lower half. Following, we need the quartile two or the median of the data set. After that, we're going to need quartile three, which is also known as the upper quartile or the median of the upper half of the data. And then finally, we need the maximum or the greatest value of the data set. And while we only really need these five essential points for box plots, I'm also going to throw in the concepts of outliers in this video to give you an understanding of that as well. Between each of these five essential points, we're going to be able to find 25% of our data. And just like you've learned previously, the median separates all of the data into two groups, 50% above it and 50% below it. Besides learning about the upper and lower 50% of a data set separated by the median, it's also going to be important to understand the middle 50% of a data set, which is the data found between quartile 1 and quartile 3, or the lower and upper quartile. Following the distance between quartile 1 and quartile 3, or the range between them, is called the IQR, or the interquartile range. The IQR lets us know the range of the middle 50% of the data centered around the median. Imagine that an entire class of 6th graders take a test, and the summary or the 5 essential points of all of their test scores are shown here. Here's an example of one that's drawn vertically, but we can also draw them horizontally as well. Here we have the minimum, which is about 52.5 or so, and that's going to be the lowest test grade. Next we have quartile 1, or the lower quartile, which was about a 60, so 25% of the students scored below this number. Then we have quartile 2, which is also known as the median, and that looks like it's about 70, and that means that half the class, or 50% of students, scored above this, and 50% scored below it. Next we have quartile 3, which looks like it's about 75, and that means that if you scored above a 75, you were in the top 25% of the class. And finally, we have the maximum score here, which looks like it's about 85, and this is the highest grade within this class. As mentioned earlier, each of these sections of this box plot represents 25% of all of the data. Notice how some of the distances between the five essential points are a little bit longer and a little bit shorter. This just represents that those 25% of data values in that section are either a little bit closer together or they're a little bit more spread out. Sometimes, when we look at a data set, we can find these things called outliers. Outliers are just data points or observations that don't quite seem to fit the norm of the rest of the population or the rest of the data. A little bit later in the video, I'll show you how to see if there's going to be an outlier in your data set or not. In addition to showing you how to find the five essential points and outliers, I'll also show you how to find the IQR or interquartile range. Essentially, this is just a measure of variability that lets us know the range of the middle 50% of the data. Now that you've seen and heard some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using when we're talking about box plots, and you now have actually seen what one looks like, let's get into some examples together. Before that though, you don't want to be one of those outliers that doesn't go ahead and click that like button, so why don't you just do that right now before we get into some examples. Alright, now that you've clicked the like button, let's grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. Example 1. The following numbers represent the number of miles Mila ran each week. These are each of the numbers of miles she ran each week, and it looks like we have 10 observations. To get started, we're going to write them in order from least to greatest. So we have 4, 6, 8, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14, 14, and 16. The minimum number of miles she ran one week was 4 miles, and the maximum was 16. Looking for the median, we can cross off numbers from both sides until we get to the middle, which is between 9 and 11. Seeing how the median number of miles is going to be 10, this separates the data into the lower 50% on the left and the upper 50% on the right. 10 miles represents the median of the dataset, or quartile 2. To calculate the lower quartile, we have to find the median of the lower half of the dataset. Crossing off numbers left and right on the lower half, we see that our median of the lower half is going to be 8, but this is also known as quartile 1. Similarly, looking for the upper quartile, we're just going to look at the upper 50% and cross off on left and right until we find the median of the upper half, and in this case it's 14. 
This represents the upper quartile or quartile 3. While these are our five essential points, let's now calculate the IQR, or the interquartile range. To find the IQR, we just have to subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile, and in this case, that's going to be 14 minus 8, and that's equal to 6. The IQR here is going to be 6. Cleaning this up a bit, we have our five essential points, and we also have the IQR as well. And once again, our five essential points separates the data into the lowest 25%, the lower middle 25%, the upper middle 25%, and the top 25%. And the IQR that we found that was equal to 6 represents the range of the middle 50% of the data. Now let's make a box plot. First, we need to start off by drawing a number line and give a title for this, so I'm going to write number of miles. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot our five essential points. Once we've plotted our five points, we're going to draw a rectangle around the lower quartile and upper quartile. Draw a line showing where Q2, or the median, is. And then draw a horizontal line connecting the minimum to the lower quartile and drawing a vertical line, as well as connecting the upper quartile with the maximum and drawing another vertical line. Here we have a box plot. Here are the five values that we found a little bit earlier. Notice how there are four distinct sections representing 25% of the data in each of them. Now let's talk about outliers for a moment. First, to find outliers, we have to take 1.5 and multiply it by the IQR. Since our IQR is 6, we're going to multiply 1.5 times 6, and this is equal to 9. To determine if there are any outliers on the low side, we have to take the lower quartile and subtract this value of 9. Since our lower quartile was 8 and we subtract 9, this is going to equal negative 1. Since Mila can't run negative miles and negative 1 isn't even in the data set, Mila is not going to have any outliers on the low end. To find out if there are any outliers or weeks that she ran a ridiculous amount of miles on the high end, we would take the upper quartile and add on this value of 9 that we found. And in this case, we're going to have 14 plus 9, and that's equal to 23. If there was one week that Mila happened to run more than 23 miles, that would be a little bit strange or out of the ordinary compared to all of the rest of the weeks of miles that she ran. Anything less than negative 1 or anything greater than 23 would represent an outlier. Here we have our finished box plot. Let's try another one together. Example 2. A group of students took a math quiz and got the following scores. Counting up all the scores, we can see that we have 17 observations, or 17 data points. Just like the last example, let's start by writing the data in order from least to greatest. We have 56, 58, 68, 75, 78, 84, 85, 86, 86, 87, 88, 89, 91, 91, 94, 95, and 100. The minimum score here is 56, and the maximum score is 100. Because we have 17 observations, I know we're going to have 8 on the lower half and 8 on the upper half, leaving 86 in the middle. This separates our data into the lower 50% and upper 50%, and 86 will be our median. Finding the middle of the lower half, we have to go between 75 and 78, and this is going to be 76.5. This is going to represent the lower quartile, or quartile number 1. Now for the upper 50% of the data, we can then find out that the middle of that is going to be 91, since 91 is, well, between 91 and 91. Therefore, we can say that the upper quartile, or quartile number 3, is equal to 91. Now that we have the 5 essential points, let's go ahead and calculate the IQR. Remember, this is going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, or in this case, 91 minus 76.5, and we're going to find the IQR is going to equal 14.5. Essentially, this just means that the middle 50% of the scores were within 14.5 points away from each other. Hopefully you can visually see that we've separated all the data into four categories of 25% of the numbers each. Seeing the distance between the lower quartile and upper quartile from 76.5 to 91, we have the IQR or the range of the middle 50% of scores. Now let's make a box plot. Here I've created an evenly spaced out number line and I'm going to title it Quiz Scores. Here's the lowest score of 56, followed by the lower quartile of 76.5, then we have the median of 86, following we have the upper quartile of 91, 
And finally, we have the maximum score of 100. Next, we're gonna draw a rectangle around the lower and upper quartile, just like this, and draw a vertical line where the median is. And to complete this box plot, we're gonna draw a horizontal line connecting the maximum to the upper quartile, and then draw another horizontal line connecting the lower quartile to the minimum. Here we have a box plot that summarizes all of the quiz scores for these students. A quarter of the class scored between a 56 and 76.5, another quarter between 76.5 and 86, another quarter between 86 and 91, and the top quarter, the top 25%, scored between a 91 and 100. And looking at our IQR here, we can see that half the class, or 50%, scored between 76.5 and 91 with a range of 14.5. Now let's check for outliers. So again, that formula is going to be 1.5 times the IQR, or in this case, 1.5 times 14.5, and that's gonna be equal to 21.75. To check for outliers on the low end, we're gonna take the lower quartile and subtract this 21.75. Substituting in, we'll have 76.5 minus 21.75, and this is equal to 54.75. If someone happened to score below 54.75 on this quiz, they would be considered an outlier or a very strange or anomaly compared to the rest of the data set. Since the lowest score was a 56, we don't have any outliers on the low end here. Now to calculate outliers on the high end, we have to take the upper quartile and add the 21.75. Substituting in, we get 91 plus 21.75, and that's equal to 112.75. If someone happened to get a bunch of extra credit and score above a 112.75 on this quiz, that would be an outlier on the high end. In this particular data set, we don't have any outliers on the high or the low end. And there we have a detailed box plot for this data set of the students who took this quiz. And there we have two detailed examples on how to take a data set, find the five essential points, calculate the IQR, as well as the outliers, and create a detailed box plot, separating the data into four groups of 25%. Now, while in the two examples in this video, we use box plots to just summarize data sets that had maybe 15 to 20 different values, uh, you can imagine this could be very useful if we had a data set with thousands of numbers or hundreds of thousands or even millions. No matter how big the data set is or the number of observations, we can use box plots to organize all the information into four different groups. Now, while in this video we focus on separating the data into four distinct groups called quartiles, there are also other types of box plots we could use and separate the data into 10 groups, and those would be called deciles. We'll save that for another time, though. And that wraps up this video on how to create box plots to summarize data. If you forgot to click the like button earlier, I really appreciate it if you could do so right now. And as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.